Welcome to another edition of EXP's Commercial Advisor Spotlight. Today, we have a very special guest. First of all, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Sean Murphy. I am the Senior Vice President of EXP Commercial Growth, and I have my partner, Lindy McNeese, who is the Commercial Director of Growth, and we have a very special guest today. We have the head of EXP's Agent Advisory Council for Commercial Real Estate, Mr. Billy Spain. Welcome, Mr. Spain. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you today, Sean? I'm doing fantastic. I mean, I have a, I have a thousand questions to ask you. You come from you come from commercial realty and realty royalty. Um, you joined EXP originally as a residential agent. Is that correct? Correct. My wife and I joined together, and um, I was doing commercial and helping her as well. There you go. So uh, you moved over to EXP Commercial. Uh, what made you do that? What made you switch over? There are a lot of agents who are in, interested in switching from residential to commercial. Well, I switched over mainly for the exclusivity of commercial um, to be able to to advertise that I, and I was with a commercial firm and not with a residential firm. I think that makes a big difference to a lot of people. I also moved over for the technology and uh, for the people that um, people that you get to meet, and people that you get to work with, the networking um, opportunities within EXP Commercial. You know, Billy, we really appreciate your service that you're giving back and being in the Agent Advisory Council. Talk a little bit about what that actually, what is that, right? So people that aren't aware or have not made the transition to come to EXP Commercial yet, that they can understand a little bit of what of what that is that you all do in the background. On the Agent Advisory Council, we um, we discuss what's going on with the company, things that we hear that need, you know, changes, things that are, um, other agents and brokers are asking for. Uh, we discuss those, the things that we can implement, we implement. Um, we also talk a lot about, uh, you know, some of the changes that are coming, the good changes uh, and the things that we're adding, you know, that the company is adding for us to enable us to do a better job. Um, you know, different things like that. Awesome. You you grew up in, in a real estate family. And, and on top of that, you're not just licensed in one state. How do you run your business now? How Why did you become licensed in two states? And how are you currently running your business? All right, we'll, back, we'll go take it one bite at a time there. Uh, I'm licensed in two states because uh, about seven years ago, um, I met a beautiful lady and moved to um, North Carolina and got married. And um, so I needed to be licensed here as well. So, but I'd been in Georgia for about 30 years and had a, a really good book of business and a lot of clients and some of my clients I'd had for, you know, 20 plus years, I wasn't going to walk away from them. My family's still in Georgia. So I, um, it's a balancing act, but I bounce back and forth between North Carolina and Georgia. I'm in Georgia about once a month for um, probably five to seven days, depending on what's going on, sometimes longer. Um, I do pick and choose which projects I work on today. Um, it works out real good for me. Um, Are you going out and doing the listings or the, the leasing or site selection or any of that yourself right now? I am. And I also have, you know, there's several other agents and brokers within the XP that um, we'll partner up on specific on a case by case basis. And that works out really good. Um, you know, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for me to run to Georgia to do something um, that's super small that costs me more to go there than I'm you know, going to end up earning. Uh, but there's a lot of folks, a lot of new agents. Um, and I give a lot of them to some of my mentees as well. Well, and speaking of mentees, Billy, you know, I see that you have a vast array of different specialties that you currently are able to do. That takes a while to do that. You know, we would consider you a generalist. So knowing that you've been in the business for 30 years, you know, tell us how that how that can in turn help the mentees that you mentor on a day to day basis. Well, the mentees, you know, they all have different interests. A lot of them are new agents and they really don't know what they want to do. They're a little bit lost. So, you know, they're able with, with my mentorship and, and my background and knowledge of, you know, a vast variety of assets. Um, they're able to um, ask me and we're able to work through them because if it's something I haven't worked on, I probably know somebody that has that I can pick up the phone and call and get us some information. Um, 
I spent a lot of time over the last 30 years getting to know a lot of different people that do a lot of different things. Um, I was very specific. I, I primarily only did land and land development um, up until about 2008 when the market crashed. And I learned real quick that I needed to get very generalized. And it's worked well for me. So I know in uh, in the past you've done auctioneering. Um, you've even been an expert witness. So with your vast array of experience, what is the one thing that you would tell an incoming commercial advisor? You know, you're basically as a mentor, you're a freshman professor. They come in and they think they're going to be nuclear physicists, and most of them end up with general business degrees. But what's the one thing you'd tell them that they need to absolutely focus on to be successful in commercial real estate? Making connections. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you, Sean, I try at least once a week to go to lunch with somebody new. Not necessarily to, to obtain their business, but to see what I can learn from them. Um, and I usually end up picking up some business out of it. It may not be that day. It may not be that month, but, you know, just by making that contact, talking to people, getting to know them, whether it's bankers, um, developers, um, investors, no matter who it is, that works very well for me. And I would say you've got to make the connections because people have got to get to know you. There's a million other people out here that, um, are chasing that business as well. And the person personability of it makes all the difference in the world. Email's great, texts are great, but picking up the phone, calling somebody, going, taking them to lunch um, or breakfast. Some people don't like to do lunch, um, but I true try to do that at least once a week. That's great. You know, that's that's a, quite a commitment. And I think that that consistency over time is going to make the difference. Like it does. Saying. It builds up. For sure. So, so it looks like over 70% of your business comes from referrals. I would be curious to know how much of that referral is coming from our EXP realty side of the house, our sister brokerage that we have here. That's something that we hear quite often that our commercial advisors get so many leads from our EXP residential agents. We do. I would say at the present time that out of that 70%, probably well over 50% comes from EXP realty agents. I watch, I work workplace, I watch it. And if it's something I can't help somebody with, I try to tell them that as well. And if I can point them in the right direction, point them to an agent that can. That's, that's amazing. Um, before we go, I'm going to ask one last question. It's the, it's the biggest question. It's, it's the hardest one for most people to answer. What's next for Billy Spain, CCIM, Certified Commercial Investment Manager? What's next for you? That's a tough one, Sean. Um, you know, I, I love farming and I joke about it and I tell everybody that I sell real estate so I can afford to farm. Um, but, you know, I'm still going to keep going. Um, you know, real estate's not something you have to retire from. You can keep doing it. Um, you know, probably next for me is working on some, you know, much bigger deals that take a lot longer to put together. Um, and advising more, you know, from the development side and from the brokerage side. Those are the things that I really enjoy. I'm working on one in Atlanta now. Um, but, we have, you know, we have not run out of need, the need for, for housing and office space. <laughs> no. And, you know, we're doing a nice mixed use project right now. It's, I've been working on it for two years, probably got another three to go before we get everything finalized. Those are the big paydays at the end, the, but the long, long vision. They are. And, um, you know, they're tough and, and you've got to have the, the financial means to, to stick it out. And sometimes it means going, you know, leasing something or selling something that, you know, hey, I really didn't want to work on something where I made that little bit of money. But, you know, it pays the bills and keeps us going until we get those big deals closed. Well, I want to thank you for taking the time out of your busy day and leading the commercial division through the Agent Advisory Council. So on behalf of myself, Sean Murphy, and Lindy McNeese, and our special guest, Billy Spain, I'd like to thank you all for taking the time to watch EXP Commercial Advisor Spotlight. And we'll see you next time.